Welcome to part 7 of my tutorial. Um, this is going to be the last instructional section on 3Blind. Um, part 8 is going to be some example solves. Um, but here I'm just going to give some tips to wrap up um, the 3Blind part of this tutorial. Um, so first I'm going to give some general tips uh, about 3Style in general. And then I'm going to give some more specific ones about um, practicing and uh, what you should do in your solves. So the goal of 3Style is to eventually be able to instantly, automatically do your commutators. Um, and what this means is being able to go straight from a pair of letters to a commutator with no thoughts in between. Um, and just like learning a language, where at first you have to translate it into your own language and then um, understand the meaning, here you first, at first, you're going to be um, translating those letters into parts, pieces on the cube, and then you're going to be translating those into cycles. Um, and so the ultimate goal is just to go straight from letters to cycle um, with no thinking in between. Um, and so it's easy to tell when a cycle is automatic. It's easy to tell when you're, when you're going like, when you're just doing or when you're doing instead, like when you're just go when you're like touching the stickers or visualizing it and then doing it. Um, so the thing is that the way I've taught three style is um, is not um, algorithmic. Like you're not m just memorizing algorithms, but in the end, it's the same feeling as having an algorithm. Where like when you're learning PLL and you get this position, you think to yourself. You think to yourself, oh, I have a T-perm, better do a T-perm. Um, whereas when you get good, you just see this position and you go. So um, it's kind of the same deal, except that these are not starting as algorithms. These are starting as things that you, things that you understand um, and know how to construct, and eventually they become automatic algorithms. Um, now, I understand that they're still algorithms because they are a specific sequence of moves meant to uh, have a specific effect on the cube. However, however, they're not algorithms in the sense that you memorize them and then do them when you get that case in a solve. Um, so just the best way to build up these associations is to practice individual cycles and practice doing solves. So practicing individual cycles um, is can be... You just want to, when you do that, say the letters in your head or say the word that those letters form for you or say all the words that those letters form for you so that you build up an association between the the words that you use and the letters. Um, I never made a letter pair list, but um, it, it might help some people. Um, I just sort of... I just sort of built a vocabulary of words and I just always used the same words for letters. Um, and so just having a, and so it can be a physical list or a mental list, but you, you want to be from an, from early on making associations between the letters and the cycles rather than between the positions on the cube and the cycles. So, um, so good way, a good way to practice that is just to drill cycles just by, for example, doing all the cycles that start at a certain spot, like this spot or this spot or this spot, and then just and then just doing all of those cycles until um, and, until you're done. And perhaps you, along the way, find some that you want to improve and stuff, um, but you're really just trying to build those associations. And then the next thing that's probably even more important is to do cited solves. Um, and cited solves are important because you're combining the memorization stage with the execution, execution stage um, so that so that you end up um, creating an association also between the memorization and the execution, which in the end need to be very closely related. Um, so, uh, and then the third thing is also doing solves. I'd say of my practice time, only 15 to 20% is spent doing actual solves, for three blind that is. Um, I spend the rest just drilling cycles, um, and doing cited solves, but mostly cited solves. And uh, when you're actually doing cited solves, it's a good idea to keep very good track of what cycles you have trouble with. If you have a cycle where 
you either have to use old Pacman or you have to think for just a little bit too long before you remember it, um, don't ignore that. You should, you should, if you have a list of all your cycles, you should put like a little check next to it in that list. Um, and if, even if you don't, at the very least, you should then practice that cycle, I don't know, six or seven times, um, while saying the letters in your head so that next time the association is just a little bit faster. Um, and then the other thing is just periodically going through and fixing your cycles. If you notice you have a cycle that takes you a second longer than the rest of your cycles, that's a good cycle to fix. Um, uh, so you can take a mean of all your cycles and you can figure out which ones are the bad ones and you can try and lower that mean. Um, and you can time cycles with a stack mat timer and just see which ones are good. You know, at first, at first a good time is it's good to have about maybe three seconds uh, for each of your cycles, um, but then the ultimate goal is to get them all sub two, um, or at least almost all of them, and a lot of them should be sub one as well, especially the edge cycles. Um, and so yeah, just you want to just keep working and getting the associations faster and getting the cycles themselves faster as well. Um, and so what this all is building to is the most important concept in blind solving, especially three style, which is think ahead. Um, and think ahead is just like look ahead, except for blindfolded solving. Uh, so think ahead is just you're thinking about what you're going to do next while you're doing your current thing. And so think ahead will both eliminate pauses during um, in recall and also pauses in figuring out what you need to do. Um, so in old Pacman, it's pretty easy just to it's pretty easy just to do your setup moves and undo them and then just think about the next one right after that and it's, you know, pretty automatic. Um, but for three style, you know, you might be wasting time if you have to, if you have to say the letters and then associate them and then do the cycle. Um, so what you just want to do is you want to try and get to the point where you can always be thinking about your next cycle while you're doing your current cycle. And with a little bit of practice, it's not super difficult. Um, there will obviously be cycles that that's easier to do for than others, um, like ones you know better than others. Um, so it's a good idea to also keep track of the cycles that you have trouble thinking ahead on. Um, and even if it's a cycle where where using um, where where using think ahead, you can do it automatically. Maybe you have trouble transitioning from that one to the next cycle. So this is both a memorization and an execution thing because you because think ahead affects both remembering what the cycle you need to do is and you have to be able to execute the cycle without thinking about the cycle that you're executing. Um, and another interesting application of think ahead, um, which it's not exactly think ahead, but um, but just but uh, what I do is I think about my corner memo while I'm memorizing the edges. This might be a little advanced uh, at first, but um, eventually it's kind of like having two threads going at once in my head where one of them is remembering my corner memo and, and one is memorizing the edges. Um, so it's really just all about getting everything very automatic. Um, so you can, so one way to really help your think ahead is to, is in when you memorize. Um, so a few things are to just notice interchanges while you're memorizing. Like if I see, if I see like, like I have this and then this, I can store it in my head that I have an F slice interchange. Maybe I won't be thinking about it the whole time, but I'll get there and it'll just slightly sharpen how quickly I can do the cycle. Um, and also when you're breaking into new cycles, you obviously want to choose stickers that will make think ahead easy. For example, if I have, if I have this sticker and then, um, I can, I'm breaking into a new cycle and I can choose one on this, on this piece, obviously, even if like, even if this is the sticker you always choose, you're going to want to choose this one. And it's especially good if you think, oh, I specifically chose this one for it to have an easy D interchange. Then you're at the point where you can, you have a free cycle, so to speak, in your solve because you can, because you can just not even think about it and just remember, oh, I set it up so that it would be a D interchange. Um, and yeah, that's, that's all I really 
have to say. Um, just keep the things that I've said in this video in mind and really deliberative practice. Really just identify what you could be doing better. It's just like 3x3 three three, except it's even easier because in 3x3 three three, maybe you're doing a few too many rotations or you're or you're um or you're messing like one little thing up. I don't know. Maybe it's easy for people who practice 3x3 three three to tell, but to me blind solving was always very concrete. It was always just um just oh, I paused a little too much before this cycle. Let me go back and fix that. Let me make this cycle better. Oh, this cycle takes me too long to execute. Let me find a better cycle for it. So, um it's all it's very to me at least it seems very concrete and it's not and it's not that difficult to pinpoint your weaknesses. For me the hard part was always actually acting on the pinpointing of the weaknesses. Like sometimes I would think I have I just did a terrible cycle and then I would just at the end of the solve I wouldn't even think about it. I would just go on and um I would just go on and um and do it the same way the next time. Um but really Pinpoint your weaknesses, no matter how painful it is, fix them. Force yourself to do the good cycles. The one time when it's okay to have a little thinking lapse is when you're forcing yourself to do a good, a new good cycle rather than an old bad cycle. Um, and that's really it. So good luck and yeah.